Right, ladies and gentlemen, we move on with bout six tonight, so would you please welcome to the cage, Andy Stevens. Welcome to the cage, Josh Elliott. Ladies and gentlemen, as this is our only boxing bag of the evening, we thought it'd be an appropriate time to honor and remember an absolute legend that passed away this weekend. This man transcended race, religion, or politics. And to me personally, and to millions across the world, he was quite simply the greatest. Could we please stand and applaud for one minute, Muhammad Ali. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. There will never be another. And now we move on to welterweight boxing over three two-minute rounds of action. And would you welcome into the red corner. He weighed in at 77.9K. He represents South End Combat Academy, Andy Stevens. And in the blue corner, he weighed in at 76.1K. He represents the Mercer Academy, Josh Elliott. 
Your referee in charge of this one, Mr. Dan Motherhady. We move on to welterweight boxing. Andy Stevens from South End Combat Academy in the red corner versus Josh Elliott from the Mercer Academy in the blue. Josh Elliott coming from the stable gym of Pete Mercer, a renowned striker, well known throughout the UK. And yes, nice foot movement from him there as well. You can see nice and light on his feet, looking for the counter as Andy Stevens comes in. Takes a little right though, Stevens dangerous. Stevens has got really fast punches down the pipe. You'll see him set them up with hooks and then come straight down the middle. Josh Elliott is going, big over and right attempt there from Josh Elliott. Yeah, needs to be just a bit straighter with that one. And again, tight guard from Stevens as he comes forward. Elliott, great footwork, in and out movement. And you can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to lure Andy Stevens in to initiate and then counter him. Both men just a bit out of range at the moment, not quite find their distancing. Short right from Stevens to the chin of Elliot. Stevens circling away. Well, he's circling towards the big right hand. He's got to be careful of that, Dean. He's got to circle outside the left hand of Josh Elliot. Circling into the danger zone. Also, he's standing a bit in front of Elliot there with his guard up but sometimes the, the punishment can travel through your arms and the gloves to your head. It's better to slip off or move off that, create some lateral movement. He's looking to stay in the pocket because if he can, and you see it a lot with the heavyweights in the boxing scene, because they're, they're not as mobile, which these two young men are, I must say, but because they're not, they tend to stay in the pocket with that tight guard, so they're always within striking range themselves. But as you said, it's a dangerous game to play. Stevens there, looking for the right hand, as you attested to, Malcolm, he's looking for that power shot. He's quite squatted in his stance, he wants to draw the power up from the floor, and transfer it through his limbs. Well, it was an entertaining opening round from both men, but neither quite found the range. As we said, Stevens was happy to stay in the pocket, keep that tight guard, sometimes square, sometimes cross hand, and what Josh Elliott was looking was to lure him out of that and then counter. But the danger was the right hand of Stevens is always there. And as, as a result, neither man really got through that cleanly to give the judges a decisive element here and say, yes, I'm going blue or red. So we to see if either man has really figured out the style of the other for round two. Often you'll get that with high-level boxers. They'll try and feel out each other in the first round. Elliott was certainly on the outside, some great footwork being moved. Stephen was trying to find his range, trying to find that power shot, keeping the guard up so he doesn't get caught with any shots. Interesting first round. Well, as you said, Dean, and quite rightly so, it was the way that Stevens distributed his weight. He squatted down, he stayed there. That says, I'm not moving. I want my shot to be powerful. But to get that power, you've got to be in range. So that's why the tight guard as well. As I said, it's a game that the heavyweights play at professional level all the time, so that their power shots are always there. But in reply, so is your opponent. So round two or three. Let's see if Elliot opens his footwork up now and turns it into some combinations. Stevens eating a shot there, not phased. Well, this is the thing he's got to be careful of. As I said, he's happy to stay in the, the pocket. He keeps himself squat and ready to throw. But there again, the left pulled him off balance. I don't think he'll get the count. It's a balance thing as much as anything else. That could add to the confidence of Josh Elliott there. Whether it was a slip or a fall, nonetheless, your opponent went down. As he pumps forward with that jab, he's coming forward a bit more. Nice body shot. Yes, he's setting up the body shots with the left hand. Stevens in the pocket. Nice jab from Stevens. He needs to follow up with some combinations and then work the head movement after to stop him eating those counter shots. Well, this is the thing. He, he set out his stall early. He wants to be there. He wants to be in range. He keeps that tight guard. But when he throws the left, the right does slip down and, and Elliot can capitalise if he gets like that with the little left and moves away. And again, Dean, you talked about his footwork. Elliot moves nicely around the left arm away from the right hand of Andy Stevens. Enables him to counter beautifully, that in and out movement coupled with lateral movement. Nice jab. Goes for the body shot. 
Now that's why Stevens wanted to stay there. As you saw, even though he was getting connected with, he was still close enough to try the left uppercut. Luckily for Elliot, he saw it and evaded it. But that's Stevens' game plan. As long as he's there, he can do this. But as with the heavyweights I was mentioning earlier, when you stay in the pocket, you're also in reach of your opponent. And at the moment, Josh Elliott is using that nicely to his advantage. Elliot so so in that overarm right there, and then coming back with a hook. So he's doing some some great feints and feints in there, and might, that might be the key to catching Stevens off guard, making him react and then capitalising on that mistake. Now for me, that was easier to score. For me, Josh Elliott did all the right things there. He realised the tight guard of Stevens. So what do you do? You start to work the body. The hands come down. Then the left hook came up over the top. For me, there was real daylight between them there, Dean. Josh Elliott coming forward with that jab. I think that jab is the key, gauging the distance, keeping Stevens off balance. As we saw, he tripped over. So he used that to his advantage. Equally, Stevens really needs to start opening up with these punches. He's squatted. He's in the pocket. He needs to make use of that. So third and final round. And as you said, if Stevens stays in the pocket, he's got to capitalise and get that right hand going. Get some torque in there in those shots because Elliott did the right tactics in the second round. And again with that beautiful footwork, pouring out with that jab. Let's see if he opts to go to the body first and try and draw those hands down and come over the top. I like what he's doing, as I said, he, he's luring him down, he's throwing the right, he's circling outside the left hand, away from Stevens' danger right, and then switches upstairs. Trader punches here, Steven. Stevens rolling and running, a tactic nonetheless, but it got him out of trouble. It did indeed, but again, a lot of boxers, you see, when they're under pressure, throw back, when really what you need to do is tuck up, move your feet and get out of there and re-jam. Re but if he can get through with one of those rights, he's still got an opportunity, Stevens. It's a nice left hook right hand there, straight down, on, found its mark. There we go, nice left hook there, but he's eating too many shots on the inside. He needs to move his head off that centre line. And you saw again there, Josh Elliott just waiting for that missed left to come in, and then the right around the guard, this time to the ear of Andy Stevens. Nice, nice feigns there from Mr. Josh Elliott. Looking to capitalise on those mistakes. Looks like he's trying to land a decisive shot, but he's, he's patient with it. That's the difference here. He's not standing in front of his opponent. He's trying to open up the door to these punches. Nice combination there from Elliott. Yes, he, he landed with that right hand, as you said. And the problem with a tight guard like he's got for Josh Elliott, um, for Andy Stevens is you've got a job to see, you have to pull the hands away from that guard to see, and that's when you're vulnerable. Stevens doing a great job of throwing that jab out there in the exchanges. It makes Elliott actually push back. If he can close the distance as Elliott pushes back, he might be able to catch him with that right hand that he's so good at throwing. You're right, Dean. He's got to throw the left and right almost simultaneously. He's got to commit to the double combination, especially with 10 seconds left now. He's using the parries there to dislodge those punches down the pipe. Elliot then go toe to toe here in the LFC. Wow, beautiful fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after three hard fought rounds, please let's hear it for both your boxers in this cage. But we do have a unanimous decision. Our judges in favor of the blue corner, Josh Elliott.